Lee is a professional engineer based, uh, based in Burlington who has spent much of his career in green home retrofits and today is going to be speaking to us about the challenges, the costs and the envi environmental impacts and the positive results that are attainable when you convert to a heat pump system. Jim has been the president of Jade Environmental Services for, uh, for the past 17 years where he has acted as a consultant and an installer of heat pump systems including hybrid heat pumps where an, ex uh, where an existing furnace is kept in service. Um, so throughout the presentation today, his calculations will demonstrate that switching to a heat pump system will save money on energy costs um, over the lifetime of the equipment compared to gas or propane or um, the different oil heating systems. Jim combines his passion for energy efficient homes and deep knowledge in heat pump technology with a hands-on approach to installation. And he will show us how to heat our homes with the most affordable and effective systems on the market today without burning fossil fuels. So without further ado, I will uh, hand it over to Jim uh, and he will take it from here. Thank you, Moses. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm glad to see we've got such a, a big turnout. Um, but, uh, it, it's uh, rewarding. So today we're going to look at types of heat pump systems, uh, the operation of those, how you integrate those into existing HVAC systems, uh, details of the systems themselves, a buying process, and then uh, what you go through in terms of the installation process, and, uh, and then a few case studies of uh, projects I've been involved with. Next. So today we're looking at air source heat pumps. Um, and there are two main categories, uh, what we call moderate climate and cold climate. The moderate climate uh, heat pumps work down to around just below freezing. And they're more popular in the uh, Southern US areas where actually they are more concerned about cooling than heating. Uh, but for Canada, we're, we're really focused on the cold climate um, heat pumps that work down to as low as minus 30, such as the one I have that I'll be talking about later. Next. So the, the nice thing about uh, a heat pump is it's really uh, a source of renewable energy. Um, it, it produces about three times the amount of energy put into it. And so for every kilowatt of energy that you purchase, the heat pump puts out three. So that means two kilowatts comes from the air. And I, I tell people, even though I'm an engineer and I go out at minus 20, I said, how can this heat my whole house? But it does, so I don't question it anymore. It's been working fine for 12 years. Um, so this also means that the uh, output produces two thirds less emissions. And when the fuel sources switch from fossil fuels to clean electricity, even more uh, reduction. Next. As uh, Rose mentioned, I'm from Burlington. So there was a, a study done by the city of Burlington to look at greenhouse gas emissions. And it found that the average was just over six tons a year. Now, if a household switched to a high efficiency gas furnace, they could, and a water heater, they could reduce it to 5.3 tons per year, where switching to an air source heat pump would reduce their carbon footprint to 2.7, and that's about a 60% reduction. Next. In terms of um, the, the air source heat pumps, the, the cost, where the average home will vary from anywhere to from four thousand dollars up to twenty thousand installed with, with tax. Uh, that's before uh, rebates, uh, and you'll save anywhere from two hundred dollars to three thousand, or maybe more, uh, in annual energy costs. Um, and it keeps going up as uh, time goes on, and you can uh, save about two to four and a half tons of carbon annually as well. But uh, what happens over a fifteen-year period? Next. Uh, this slide shows uh, uh, replacing, say your existing system is, is finally conked out, both your air conditioning and your, and your furnace. So you can get a new furnace, an air conditioner, and uh, on the left you see the blue is the, uh, 
operating costs were 15 years with 2% inflation. And then the um, purchase price, um, that's net after rebates, for a total in the gray column of, um, this one's about close to 50,000. Um, and then the two in the middle are, are hybrid heat pumps, one with a, a, a furnace gas backup and one with an electric coil backup. And then on the far right is a full uh, hybrid heat pump, sorry, full uh, cold climate heat pump, such as mine that works out in the minus 30 with no backup. So the, the total cost is uh, better than all the other alternatives. Next. We also looked at um, people out in rural areas on propane and oil. Um, the, the price of those products seems to vary quite a bit. And um, the closest I could get for this presentation was propane is about $1.28 a liter without delivery or the tank rental, uh, where oil was about $2 a liter, uh, again, no delivery or tank rental. And people are telling, telling me they're spending thousands of dollars a month uh, on these heating systems. Next. So to summarize those six options, and you can see the, the two that stand out are oil and propane. Um, and the heat pumps, um, both the hybrid and the full heat pump, uh, are, are slightly better than just a regular gas furnace and uh, air conditioner. Next. This is a, a table that I won't go through in detail, but you can uh, review that later, or you can, you know, it'll be ready, uh, available in the PDF for people who like to dig into the numbers a little more. Uh, next, we're, we're also trying to do kind of a, a volume sale of um, people with an existing furnace, because the last ones we're looking at, if everything's toast and you're looking at new options. If you've got a, a reasonable furnace that's still working, um, you can just add the hybrid. Um, so the, on, on the left, we see just keeping your own furnace going, what the operating cost will be, especially if it's a, a mid-efficiency, it can be more than this, um, compared to adding a hybrid, which is going to use less fuel, but you have the capital cost to contend with, but overall, you're so farther ahead. Next. And again, you can dig into the, to the details here. And, and these, you know, take these with a grain of salt. Everything's always changing, uh, both the cost of product and the cost of energy. So this is just a, a general guide. So now the other thing is that we found people say, well, I've got a, a cold basement. It's cold in the, in the winter because heat rises and it's cold in the summer because the air conditioning cold drops down into the basement. So uh, again, if you just keep your existing system, you'll see the cost on the left. If you add what's called a mini split, so you have an outdoor unit and then a, a head, say in a family room in the basement, and you run that in the um, with your furnace fan circulating the air, you can provide a lot of heating for the whole house through the supply in the basement. And um, then in the uh, summer when it's a little chilly in, in the basement, you can top it up with heat. Sounds kind of crazy, but uh, for people who want the comfort, uh, that's an option. Next. Again, further details are available on request. Uh, next. So now we look at uh, maintenance. In general, um, the maintaining of a heat pump, it's like a refrigerator. How often do you have your refrigerator serviced? Uh, so compared to a gas furnace and air conditioner, which typically you have two service calls, one for the furnace, one for the air. Um, with a heat pump, you can do that all in one, one service call. Um, you should keep your outdoor unit uh, clean. You know, make sure there's no leaves and debris on it and change your indoor filter uh, regularly. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, did an annual inspection. Next. So people ask me, what do you do if the power goes out in the middle of winter and you've got a, 
an electric heat pump? Well, you can use a backup such as uh, the hybrid system, which has a gas furnace, um, or you can power essential loads from an electric vehicle or a battery bank um, and provide electricity that way to run sort of appliances, which could include a heat pump. Uh, you can also use a gas or a power place, um, but if, if all of those don't work, you can drain your pipes and add antifreeze like you do growing rice and cottages and stay with relatives or, or in a hotel that still has power. Um, the, but, uh, it, it doesn't matter really um, which one you pick, the point is to have a plan. Next. So in terms of products, Again, these are the moderate climate brands that um, you know people have selected. Um, especially, you know, in the last five or ten years, they were a little more popular. But they really are are only good to around just below freezing, and that some of the manufacturers show them sitting on the ground. Next. Uh, the, the Asian models really have taken the, uh, the technology to, to, the, to the limit and um, provide units that are a, a vertical with a horizontal fan, they call it a, a Mr. Slim design, and that can, uh, we tend to mount them on the wall if they're not too heavy or um, on a stand above the snow line. Next. This is a picture I took in the winter. Uh, this was like an apartment building. One person had selected the cold climate on the left on, on a stand, and the other person had selected uh, uh, the moderate sitting on the ground. So they had got any more snow, they'd have to go and dig it out to make it work. Next. We, uh, to help you with the buying process, we created a decision flow chart. So um, before you start, you, you can go through our flow chart. Uh, so you can do a lot of the homework yourself to decide what's best for you. So we give sample forms and calculators for your design. We give information on audits, rebates, and loans. And we give a sample request for quotations that you can put out to installers. Uh, and then we have also an installation checklist um, that the, you know, you make sure that the installer's doing everything you should. And then uh, if you want an owner manual, we could provide that um, both either electronically or in a, in a paper binder. Next. So this is just kind of the first page. This is still being evolved. So um, it's not, won't be available right away, but as soon as it is, we'll, we'll let you know. Next. Now the hybrid system, which is considered the best bang for your buck, it can work with either a new or an existing either natural gas, oil, or electric furnace. And it's very effective in carbon reduction. Um, people who've done, who've done these installations find that the um, heat pump runs for about 95% of the, the heating uh, demand. Uh, so it, what it does is it replaces the refrigerant coil that you typically find above the furnace because it's a two-way coil because it's heating and cooling, and it replaces the outdoor coil and fan unit. Next, we also look at people who want to uh, do a deep energy retrofit, uh, and this shows the uh, effectiveness of, of various options. So on the left is the uh, an existing home of about seven tons. Um, for that, heating, cooling, hot water, and electricity. So um, the, the hybrid heat pump gives you the biggest reduction. And then next to that is uh, insulation and air sealing. So that's insulating the attic and the foundation. Those are the most effective areas to concentrate on. After that, you can switch to an electric water heater. And if you look at the, uh, the red line on top, you see the operating cost goes up a little bit. Uh, that's today's dollars. That's gonna change, but 
switching to electric as I did. I had one on the gas water heater and swapped it out for two electrics because it was taking too long to get water to the kitchen. It was taking two minutes and now it's 13 seconds. Anyway, um, after that is uh, wrapping your house in a big blanket or exterior insulation, uh, then followed by new doors and windows. Um, if your windows are in bad shape, you should replace them anyway, regardless of the energy savings, you'll just feel better. Um, and then finally, solar PV will, will help uh, get you down almost to, to net zero. Next. A lot of people say, do I need to upgrade my electrical panel? Uh, the Electoral Safety Authority in, uh, uh, not Association, Authority in Ontario uh, has under the Canadian Electoral Code a uh, uh, load calculation you can do to see uh, what size your panel should be and whether it's efficient to take on different types of uh, heat pumps. But usually a 100 amp panel is sufficient if you still keep your gas water heater and you don't have a level two EV charger, but you can um, you can make other switches with other things like a heat pump water heater and a condensing clothes dryer so that you can reduce your electrical demand so you don't have to upgrade your panel. But we can uh, give you more details on that later. Next. So this kind of shows the different components for a hybrid system. On the upper right, you have the outdoor unit. Uh, going to the far left, you have your regular furnace. With uh, This is a demonstration with a plexiglass duct, so you can see the coil inside there. Um, that pail on the ground is to collect the condensate. Um, so this, these are powered by your electrical panel. Uh, in the middle, you have the uh, interface or computer control panel uh, tied into the thermostat. So this computer lets everything talk to each other, even with smart thermostats. Next. So in, in terms of installation, people maybe don't want to hear this, but building permits are required and they're the responsibility of the homeowner, not the installer. But this can cost $1,000 plus or minus. Uh, and in my experience, Nobody does it, um, but I think there is a way to work with municipalities uh, to use the information from an energy audit to, to fill out a simple form to streamline the process and not involve consultants and uh, get them to waive the fee for the permit. Um, and this will result in, in safer uh, and more reliable installations. Now, getting the work done, the point we're at is uh, installers are scrambling to, to understand all these new products that are coming out and uh, they're a little more complicated. Um, so everyone's on the learning curve. I think we all have to work together to, to improve this. But there are consultants, municipalities and environmental groups such as Green Venture that can do the, the hand-holding or the coaching that's needed. Next. So we provide, a, at the moment, a free consultation that gives you options on capital costs, energy savings, carbon savings. Um, then we help you with a request for quotation to go to installers. Uh, once you decide, we do an installation checklist, as I've mentioned in the uh, flow chart. And then in, at the end, we can give you an owner's manual, either in electronic or physical format. Next. So for consideration, um, once you've sealed up your house, uh, you have to look at indoor air quality. And uh, humidity is one of the issues. So you may be getting too much humidity, so you want to uh, reduce that. Um, and devices that can help with that um, and provide humidity that you may need in the winter are uh, what are called heat recovery ventilators and energy recovery ventilators. And, I won't go into those. There's a lot to think about when you're going into that level. The other problem we've run into is condo boards are usually not um, conversant in, in heat pumps and they've got restrictions. They don't want you know, pipes out on the outside of the walls, the exterior and running through common space like attics. So there are some issues that, that have to be, be dealt with. Next. So I, here's 
few jobs that we did. This the first one is a rural property with a propane furnace. And they got this um, idea, heat pump that works to minus 15 and then the pro propane takes over. It was $7,800 installed. This was two or three years ago. Uh, they're saving about 3,000 in annual savings. They were, and it's probably more now, and over 3,000 kilograms of carbon. Next. This house was a walkout um, from the basement. So they, um, they just had to run the refrigerant line from the furnace through a bedroom. And they did it through the ceiling space without any holes, They're great installers. And then the, the outdoor unit is on the outside. And the electrical panel was in the furnace room. It's not shown on this slide. Next. So there is a poor uh, uh, propane tank doesn't get any visitors anymore. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> Next. Um, this is a baseboard heated townhouse and it was a condo, but the condo board allowed uh, exterior lines, as you see, uh, on the back. They, they wouldn't allow them on the front, but they allowed it on the back. So this is a, a multi-port uh, hybrid unit that provides uh, uh, the refrigerant lines to three different heads uh, to, in two bedrooms and in um, the main living open concept dining area. Uh, it was 10,000 installed uh, and it also included some uh, air sealing and uh, some other upgrades at the time. Uh, there was about seven, $600 annual savings, but that also it includes the cooling that they didn't have before, which was one of the reasons to go to the uh, heat pump. And the carbon savings weren't much because they were already using electricity. Next. These are the, the indoor heads. Um, these are in two different bedrooms. Uh, when you design a system, you've got to think about occupancy. Do you, do you have a situation where you have you want to have bedroom doors closed at night for privacy. Um, and you want to be able to use like a down um, a basement rec room or something. So you have to talk to your installer designer as to what is the best solution for your particular uh, lifestyle. Uh, next. So this is my home. It's again, 12 years old. Uh, it was the first time uh, Mitsubishi had brought out the Zuba heat pump in, uh, in Canada. And uh, I was going to go with the Wells, or, you know, to the ground source um, heat pump in my front lawn when the installer said, how about an air source? And I'd never heard of it uh, here. I'm an engineer. I said, what are you talking about? I said, yeah, it's been here for six months. I said, I don't know if I want to take a chance, but you know, you told me 50,000 for my uh, ground source. What would this cost? And he said 15,000 and I said, I'm sold. Um, so the day that we moved in, um, the price of uh, natural gas dropped. I had done all my calculations on higher prices. This was in the late um, 2000. Um, so for the seven years, I was spending about as much as I would have if I got a regular gas furnace, high efficiency and, and air conditioner. But because my house is so well insulated, I'm still only paying $500 a year for heating and cooling. Uh, and I'm saving about five tons of carbon. Um, so in those 12 years, my cost of fuel has doubled, but it's still just around $1,000, which is, is a lot lower than uh, other people are paying for this. is just under 4,000 square foot heated area for the house. Next. So that's the outside unit. As you can see, it's a bigger one with the two fans and it's, you can't really see, but it's mounted on a stand and I've got a big overhang. So it's well protected from uh, snow and, and you know, there's trees with leaves falling. That's something you have to consider. You don't want uh, ice and water dropping on top of these units in the winter. And inside is the air handling unit. That was before they kind of tidied up the, wire, the wiring. Next. So this is one where um, if you look closely up near the uh, 
higher roof. Uh, the owner had solar panels, so they had gone with that and they uh, insulated the basement with spray foam. Uh, they had a fairly new furnace, but the air conditioning was on its last leg. So they went again with the uh, my idea to work to minus 15 and, and gas takes over. They had the Ego B Smart thermostat, which took a little um, tinkering to get it to work properly with the, uh, the controller for the, the heat pump. It was $4,900 installed. Um, they weren't saving a lot of annual uh, energy costs because they'd already done so much to reduce those costs, but they were still saving close to five tons of carbon. Next. That's the outdoor unit. And uh, two years later, there was another one on the other wall for, for the neighbor. Next. So this is a semi-detached uh, home in, in Guelph. Again, a similar um, a product. Um, it was, this, the other ones were two tons. This one is one and a half tons. Uh, again, working down to minus 15. And then uh, they put in a new gas furnace because the furnace was on its last legs, as well as the air conditioning. Just a little over 7,000 installed, but they also did some uh, insulation, air sealing, and uh, switch to a, a electric water heater. About $400 savings in, in energy and over two tons of carbon. Next. So that shows the outdoor unit, uh, again, mounted above uh, snow line. And inside on the left, you see the furnace, the high efficiency with those two pipes, the both intake and exhaust, inducted to the outside. And then on top of that is the coil that's uh, in, inside the ductwork. You can see off to the right is their the new electric water heater. Uh, one of the things that the owner loves about this, and uh, the, the, that was an open basement area where she would have her grandkids come and play. And she said it was so nice to get rid of the noise from that gas water heater because it was one of those ones with the blower on it. Um, high efficiency, whereas the electric is completely silent. And the, the new furnace with the blower in it was very quiet. And the outdoor unit, uh, she said the neighbors were so happy that she got rid of that oil air conditioner and got this quiet uh, heat pump. Uh, you don't have to raise your voice when you're standing in front of it to have a conversation. Next. This is a house across from me in downtown Burlington. It's a 1914 brick home, uh, really not much insulation anywhere. Um, so we put in, it was hot water boiler in the basement uh, and radiators. So we put in uh, a multi-port with three feeds, two to the, uh, the downstairs the living room and dining room, and then uh, a unit up in the attic that fed the three bedrooms and bathroom through flexible ducting. It was expensive, twenty thousand uh, dollars. They six hundred in, in uh, annual savings, but again, that's increasing. And they didn't have cooling before, and just under four tons of carbon. Next, sorry, you can see in that slide the outdoor unit with the lines going up to the attic and down to the basement. So the top left is one of the. Um, uh, floor mounted units, which it actually hung on the wall, but it's near the floor. And you can see the feed from the basement coming in from the bottom. And again, this helps circulate air. They didn't have air circulation before. There's a uh, high quality filter in there. Um, and there was one in, that's the dining room. There's one in the uh, living room as well. Then upstairs in the attic, you see the, uh, the, the unit that distributes the uh, the heat and cooling to the different rooms. Before we we all we enclose that all in an enclosure and then insulate it on top of that. Uh, and on the right is the ceiling vent, which has a, a an adjustable center ring that you can uh, turn to increase or decrease the amount of airflow. Next. 
Great. So that is uh, sort of the bulk of the presentation. Um, and, you know, I, I hope you really learned um, what heat pumps mean for different homes as every home is quite different. Um, you do really need to understand how, how these systems work. I think a big takeaway for me as well was that, um, you know, uh, the building envelope does need to be uh, properly sealed in order for heat pumps to work at their maximum capacity. Um, you know, if you have insulation, you've done draft proofing, uh, you can really understand what kind of size heat pump you need uh, to, to make your home, um, you know, more energy efficient and, and pay less for bills at the end of the day. Um, and one of the first steps to do that and to understand this process is to really get a home energy evaluation done. Um, you know, I also wanted to bring up that we all know that energy Price, prices are rising. They're going to keep rising. It, it's a known fact. There's no going around that anymore. Um, and heat pumps are truly a way to, to keep those costs at bay, if you will. Um, so I won't go into too much detail here as we have a couple questions in the chat that I'd like to address. Uh, but you can schedule a home energy evaluation with Green Venture as your first step to understand if your home is suitable for a, for a heat pump. Um, and again, that we are working with the federal government to be able to provide subsidies for these evaluations. Um, and, you know, really using these evaluations, evaluations as a measurement tool uh, to gauge efficiency of windows, your heating and cooling equipment, um, insulation levels, all that sort of thing. Uh, we also do perform blower tests, which essentially just um, provide us information of how airtight the home truly is, really pinpoints the areas where, um, where your home could be more energy efficient. Um, and if you have any questions about evaluations or heat pumps, uh, or sorry, or a blower door test and what that all entails, um, feel free to inquire on our website, uh, send me an email. Um, I'm happy to have these conversations and, and move forward with an evaluation if need be. Um, and so the Canada Greener Homes Grant and Loan as well does have a $5,000 incentive for uh, heat pumps. There are some eligibility criteria that you must meet. Um, you know, for example, it does require for the heat pump to uh, be capable of distributing heat throughout the entire home, uh, must be installed by a licensed trained professional, um, that sort of thing. Um, I can also share more details on that. You can visit uh, greener homes to find out more um, and certainly again send me an inquiry um, through our website as well and I just wanted to show a quick video here um, apologies as this wasn't actually working earlier today um, but uh, let's see how it is going today Can everyone hear that okay? Jim, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear this? I'm not getting it. Okay. Oh, it's muted. Sorry, one moment here. I live in I'm not. I'm not getting audio.
No, we're not getting audio. I think you have to unmute it. Can't hear anything. I couldn't hear it. Great. Okay, so we will now move on to the Q&A portion of the presentation. Um, and starting um, with this first question here. Um, so Jim, how would a heat pump work with in-floor heating using a gas boiler? Yeah, you would typically use what we call a hybrid system, probably the uh, mini split. So you would have, like we showed for the townhouse, an outdoor unit and then two or three units uh, inside. Uh, so it would just be providing heat. So you turn down your in floor and then obviously you get um, air circulation and you get cooling in the uh, summer as well. Great. And Ron asks, wouldn't you need a larger electrical panel to handle the electric backup system? Yes, if you go with uh, just an electric resistance coil, um, that is usually about 15 kilowatts. So yeah, that could require uh, you know, a 50 amp breaker. So that, that is a consideration. Great. And uh, Carrier, so Patrick asks, Carrier is advertising a heat pump that will heat down to negative 30. Is this real? You said Carrier only goes uh, down a bit below freezing. Is that correct? I'm not aware of that uh, product. I, I've been focusing on the, uh, the Asian just because they were you know, ahead of the game and, and they've been providing excellent product. Uh, but you could be right. Great. And next question is, um, I think referring to your your home, how is it possible not to have a backup system? The heat pump is rated to minus 30. Uh, so I should tell you a little secret. When I applied for the building permit, because the house wasn't built, I couldn't do a blower door test. <clears throat> uh, and there was only one size heat pump available in Canada, a three ton. Uh, they did the calculations and say, yeah, the three ton will work, but we put a 10% penalty on because we don't know how well your house is going to be built. So you have to use a hot water backup off your water heater. So I've got a, a hot water coil in mine as backup. So, so that's another option, but you know that is fed by uh, a hot water gas uh, appliance. Makes sense. And uh, so Lori asks, how long is a unit expected to last? 
Uh, again, maintenance is, is a factor, uh, but typically these units are, are rated for the same lifetime as regular uh, furnace and air conditioner. You know, mine's 12 years old now and it's in good shape. Um, fifth, I'd say 15 years, you could get more out of it. Um, you know, but yeah, it's, it's comparable to uh, current um, heating and cooling devices. Great. And I think, um, you know, something that I had a question about is if you could feed um, the heat pump system into an existing ductwork system, or what does that sort of look like? Yeah, you can actually put in a, um, um, we were doing a design uh, that has a, a three part outdoor unit. So what happens is, is this house had ducting. So we put in um, an air handler unit, um, which would have a lot of the uh, heating and cooling provided through the, the duct system, but these people wanted to rent out the basement with a separate unit. So they put in um, a mini split head uh, in two rooms in the basement. So they, they covered the whole house. And the beauty of it was the, the tenants in the basement had their individual uh, temperature control. So it didn't conflict with uh, the rest of the house. Great. Uh, and if you don't have a hybrid system, what happens when the temperature goes down below 30? I live in Ottawa from Tom. Sorry, when you don't have when you have a hybrid that only goes to minus 15 and then and then it gets colder well yeah you 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 have to have some means of, of backup um yeah yeah and i think one of the keys there is to uh to be able to have that insulated home that will hold the heat in longer you know maybe the power outage is, is for an hour um and within that hour you don't even need to have the heat on because your home is so well insulated um and the envelope is sealed but that is, that's just my top of mind kind of thought. Correct. Um, um, just going through these here. Um, okay, so I have a question here from Ted. I have a 1910 year, uh, a house built in 1910. Uh, like case study number six, we are doing renovations next year, going to replace the furnace entirely and ideally switch to an on-demand water heater. Is it required to have multiple heat pumps or one on each floor? Does every floor require a unit in with the heating and cooling? Does it work with an on-demand hot water system? There's a lot of questions in there. Well, the, the water heating is separate from the space heating and cooling. So you can, uh, there's no conflict, you can keep your on demand um, and then add the heating and cooling. If you have no duct work, um, you would have, like I mentioned earlier, a, a multi-port with um, the, the heads in, in the, the most um, uh, appropriately placed locations in your house. You, you'd have to look at, uh, you know, just what your occupancy is and the layout of the house uh, to do that. Makes sense. Uh, and a question from Zoe. Uh, what is the bylaw about installing, about install location and distance from the property line? Uh, in most municipalities, uh, <clears throat> they have what are called setback requirements from the property line. Um, but that's from the, say, the fence to the house, to the wall, but you are allowed to have a, an air conditioner like on the ground or a heat pump on the wall projecting into that side yard by, I think, two or three feet. Uh, depends on, on the particular municipality. Uh, so it's especially if you're allowed to put a, an air conditioner on the ground, then you wouldn't have any trouble with a heat pump on the wall. Great. And there's another question here from Tom. I think it's relating to uh, heat distribution. They are currently using 
um, a furnace that struggles to get hot air upstairs. Um, you know, wondering if this, uh, if we would need like a, um, a more powerful heat pump um, or, or do you, off the top of your head, do you know of any problems that could be causing this lack of uh, air, hot air from going up into the upstairs? Yeah, I had this summer, a guy called me and said, um, you know, my upstairs, my daughter's freezing in the, in the winter and sweating in the summer. And I measured 12 degrees Celsius in the basement and 29 upstairs. And then I went out and looked at his roof. I said, you've got no roof vents. And he says, yeah, we don't have any insulation either. This was an old house. So the first thing is to look at the building envelope. Um, so he needed roof vents because that protects uh, your roof from mold and, and uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, structural issues. So you, you have to look, uh, first look at um, having ventilation and the proper movement of air um, before you start spending money on heat pumps. And then, and then we find too with the ductwork, um, uh, especially older systems that maybe weren't installed too well, if there are joints between each piece of ductwork, you get leakage. Um, like in my house, they, they actually, they put duct tape on, on every joint uh, and not just the Canadian tire duct tape, but the uh, aluminum uh, heavy duty type of uh, tape. Um, and I hear there is a product now you can spray into your duct system that uh, as soon as this gas uh, finds air leaking, it, it uh, hardens and, and seals ducts. So, um, this question is, 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 has come up a lot. And the, the problem is that this is done in, in commercial buildings and uh, you know, large residential buildings um, by air balance companies, but it's non-existent in the average uh, single family and residential development. I, I hope that changes, but there are ways to improve your ventilation before you start looking at uh, yeah, spending money on heat pumps. Great, great. Thank you for that. Um, and I do understand that, um, you know, Grant is uh, just asking about the elephant in the room, how Enbridge is, is part of, um, you know, our conversation here. They are not a co-sponsor of this event whatsoever. Um, but I will say that we work with Enbridge for uh, their home efficiency rebate program. Yes, that does include um, incentivizing uh, gas furnaces. However, that also includes incentivizing every as not every aspect of the home, but a lot of different aspects of your home to get it more energy efficient, right? So we do work with them to um, uh, give rebates on uh, on insulation, air sealing, windows, doors, that sort of thing. You know, our goal is really to help homeowners reduce their energy uh, consumption at home. And this is part of the way that we uh, participate um, in that as well. Um, and, you know, these programs are evolving and changing as time goes on. And, um, and you might not you might you might see more rebates for furnaces you might not see them um all together so we are just working you know with homeowners to help reduce um emissions and um grant i'm happy to also keep chatting about that with you um if you want to send me an email or, or talk um at a later and, and if, I, if i could jump in um yeah. so I, I still have gas to my house we like cooking with the gas range our oven is is uh, convection so it's electric but we have a fireplace. Um, so I look upon my connection, I, I only use a, uh, $10 worth of gas a month, but the service charge is 30 bucks or whatever. But I look at that as an insurance policy because if, if the, the power goes out, I mean, you know, I can last for a day or so without any heat, uh, you know, freezing to death. Um, so th that's an aspect of, of keeping gas. It's a, it's a, it's a backup. Um, and the other point is that, you know, you've heard the term, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Uh, Enbridge is, is trying to survive um, in their industry. They, they've, they've seen the writing on the wall. 
but we can't just quit cold turkey and, and ban all fossil fuel appliances overnight. Uh, and I think we have to work with the oil and gas companies in the transition that makes sense. Um, and and there, there are some times when you do need a fossil fuel backup. Uh, the um, Canadian government has now passed legislation for new buildings to, um, it's, a, it's a, a program where you can select what is best for your situation. You can go all electric uh, and insulate uh, the building as well as you can, or you can have a compromise where you, like a hybrid system where you have mostly electric and some emergency uh, backup. Typically, if it's below 10 degrees, they will let you use gas as backup. So the point is your primary source of heating will be electricity, clean electricity in Ontario, and you will have the backup you need from fossil fuels. So, you know, the, these guys aren't all bad, and I think they're, you know, I'd rather work with them than against them.